Hi, I'm John Townsend and I want to invite you to this very special series of uh, videos. We're here at Mount Vernon, the home of General George and Martha Washington right here in Northern Virginia. I'm right here on the, the beautiful Potomac River. We have this amazing uh, house behind us and all these wonderful historic buildings and we'll be exploring some foods. Foods that likely would have been eaten here and on the grounds at different places. This is going to be so much fun. I really want to invite you to come along and experience this. Come on. Hello, Deb. You are Deb Colburn. You and what's your title? I'm the uh, interpretive program supervisor for historic trades. For John. historic trades. This is wonderful. We're going to be doing a lot of cooking this weekend, right? We sure are. Or this week. Uh, but not as much cooking as would normally go on here. That's correct. Tell me about this. Absolutely. So in Washington's lifetime here at Mount Vernon, this is fishing season. So this is when a million to a million and a half shad herring are being harvested out of the river mm -hmm. every spring during a six week period. And that is a time when Washington is calling for all hands on deck, literally bringing slaves out of their regular duties, not mm -hmm. just field hands, but uh, his blacksmiths, his carpenters, his spinners, his dairy maids, his house servants. And so as a result, they're working round the clock while the fish are running. Washington wants those nets out there. These yeah. people are not going to be going back to their homes to prepare their meals for themselves the way they normally do. The cookeries at the fisheries are going to be providing these non-stop, constant, cycle around the clock meals for the slaves on a large scale because of how many mouths there were to feed. And there are multiple fisheries right here there were, in the location. There were nine miles of coastline here at Mount Vernon, wow. Washington has, so he's got three different fisheries uh -huh. on each uh, poignant part of the coastline um, located at three different farms. And how many, you said, how many fish was that again? A million to a million and a half. And these are big fish. Shad herring. This is a shad how herring. How much is it going to weigh? <laughs> um, I think this one in particular was about a 20 pounder. I can't, that is, that is hard to fathom. And this is all hand processed fish at the time and they're doing this within a six week period. Six week period. Now the salting um, is happening at, at the same time as well. So not just the fresh fish is being prepared, right. but the main purpose for these fisheries is Washington's export business of salt fish herring down to the West Indies uh -huh. and to produce enough salt fish to give each of his working slaves five ounces of salt fish every day, 365 day, days yeah. out of the year. That, that is, it's an, it's an incredible process, I'm sure it must have been amazing to watch it going on. Well, we can only imagine, um, yeah. and the documentation that we have, of course, can bring up vivid imagery of what was going on. Wow. So how do we get started with this guy? Okay, well, first we have to clean him. And okay. so what that entails basically is uh, scaling him. So removing any of the scales that will come off with the scraping of the knife. Okay. Now there's silvery. And what's fun about these fish is that uh, they were incredibly visible, not just because of their quantity in the river, but the amount of... They're so brilliant. Yeah, yeah, just brilliant and shining in the, in the sunlight. So here we go. So basically taking off the majority of the excess scales and then moving from the scaling into cutting its head off. Okay. We don't need that. Nope, we don't need the head. Although they probably were saving this to put in soups, uh -huh. um, fish head soup. I would have been able to get some nutrients out of that and one more Maybe thing we'll do that to some feed. other day. Other day. <laughs> I'm not as interested in it myself. He's a big one, so just keep working our way through here. Without cutting yourself. Mm -hmm. Good. And then we're going to get rid of all the stuff on the inside that we don't need. Focus on the actual meat portion. The actual meat portion. And so then the next thing that happens is you have to cut through so that you can splay it open like I've done with this one here. Right. And that's, uh, it's called butterflying it. Mm -hmm. So we're basically breaking the ribs from the spine so we can get this whole fish to lay flat. There we go. All right. That's a much happier one. Now I'm just gonna dip her into my uh -huh. wash tub. Okay. So that I can get the last yes. of the mess off. Now we're going to season them. Okay, so seasoning. Seasoning. So the kinds of things that would have been 
very readily accessible are going to be cayenne pepper. Okay. Um, lots of different hot spicy peppers according to our records here at Mount Vernon really? that Washington is growing. He's experimenting with all different kinds. Fish peppers, bird peppers, cayenne. Um, that is amazing. Isn't it incredible? I, I really wouldn't have guessed that. <laughs> So th those, um, those do well by them. They've also got um, black peppers and the other uh, seasoning that I'm gonna use today is, oh, I didn't want to neglect my other one that's not quite so pretty, but still gonna taste just fine. Uh -huh. um, I've got also have some salt and some rosemary and dried thyme. Now they're using Portuguese salt. <laughs> That's uh, uh, interesting. Isn't it? Isn't yeah. it? Now, so Washington is choosing Portuguese salts because it's best for the salting of the fish um, that he, he needs to ship uh -huh. and to you know, preserve for long periods of sure. time. Um, and that's his preferred. He's always complaining about when he has difficulty getting it uh -huh. and looking for it. And we are, you know, it seems to me and to the, the majority of the historians here that the salt that they're going to be using for cooking with is probably the same salt they're salting with at the fisheries anyway. Yeah, uh, because sure. Because right. you got barrels and barrels right. of it. <laughs> Why would you use something else? Right, yeah. exactly, exactly. And again, this is just dried um, rosemary, oh, yes. some thyme, some of your more traditional savory spices. So at this point, this is your planked or ready to plank shad. Okay. And uh, we'll be attaching it to the plank with nails uh -huh. and basically nailing it into the plank from the top okay. and that way the fire will be able to roast the inner meaty portion of the fish. Yeah. So this is our our, uh, our planking station, right? That's right. Where we can build a fire, but right now we don't have a fire. We're just gonna, how do we do this? Well, we're gonna mount the fish on the plank. Okay. So what I'm going to need you to do is hold it in place for me about there. Okay. While I get my nails. And it's super simple. You just basically push it right through the flesh, but up in a nice strong area that's going to hold the whole weight of the fish. Ah. That's one. Okay. And it doesn't get any nails or anything down here? Nope, it's just going to dangle okay. free. it's just going to dangle. Dangle free. Okay. All right, we got that one there, beautiful. And so you can imagine on a really big scale operation how many, how large this plank wall would be and how many fish you're going to be attaching to it regularly. And basically, once you get your nails in place, you can just slide the fish off later on uh -huh. and slide the fish right back over the same nail. So I you're not see. having to re-nail every single, single, right. single time. So I think that's going to do it. And that, there, there they are. There they are. Now we okay. build our fire in front. And we'll just have a low fire right there. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So Deborah, these have been on for... About an hour. About an hour. How do you know when they're done, other well, than maybe by looks? Well, by looks, but also traditionally, you uh -huh. know, just like you do anything else you're checking at your oven at home, you're going right. to poke them. You're going to feel what that flesh feels like, going right. to take a peek on the inside, and I see nice cooked fish there. Right. So it's like flaky, it's white, it's not that red translucent color. Exactly. Okay, and so... and and. You haven't turned this or anything. It's nope. just, it just, there it is. There it is. Okay. Roasted right off, the, right uh, in front of the open fire. And how do we get it off of there? We're going to slide it right off of these handy dandy nails. And not drop it in the fire. And not drop it in the <laughs> fire or catch it, that tail and it, on and fire. And it holds together really well. Doesn't Maybe with it? all that fish skin and everything. Yep, but look how flaky it wants to peel that off is, That already. looks amazing. There's the fish. Uh, you've separated some of it out for us. Obviously, we've got some bone issues we have to deal with, right? Yes. You've got two different kinds of like these big, easy to see bones yes. uh, that seem to be fairly easy to separate. And then along this back edge, these little hair-like bones. They're very, very tiny, but they actually, you, you, basically you could even chew them up and digest them. We don't yeah. like to, so right. I try to so we separate remove them, them out as but much as But they're not terrible. Possible. They're not no. terribly different. No. Okay, well, uh, I'm ready to give it a try. Oh. It looks good. It smells good. Let's see what you think. It's got a a wonderful um, a texture. It's not too soft, not too hard, it's not a different. You know, it, you would think it might be easy to overcook this and make it. You'd ruin it, but 
I mean, it's like a plank by the fire. You did a perfect job. Thank you, John. Getting this off before when it was supposed to, or maybe it, I mean, is it easy? Is... Uh, uh, I think that basically fish cooks itself as long as you put heat in front of it. There we go. <laughs> it's just not letting it go too long. Okay. And being sure that unless you, you know, are of a sushi generation, uh. that <laughs> it's not too undercooked. And right. so basically though, that just comes with experience. You start to tell what, as you mentioned before, what it looks like, whether yeah. it's too translucent or not. The right texture. The right yeah, texture, yeah. absolutely right. right. And it's got a wonderful smoky flavor to it. It's got the amazing spices that you put on there. It's one of my favorite things to cook this time of year because I love imagining what it must have been like to weigh out a whole table worth of these planked fish right. and having everybody together in a, in a yeah. very unusual setting, just diving in and getting sustenance and enjoying the first fresh catch of, catch of the season. Um, it's just not a usual activity here at Mount Vernon, except during fishing season. Right. And it, definitely it was an all-you-could-eat probably situation. As much as you want, we've got all, just go out and catch some more. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Well, amazing flavors. What, did, what do you think for the flavors? What uh, would you th I'm very happy. Sometimes I leave off the cayenne and I go more with a rosemary, thyme, heavy, heavy, you know, right. in that savory direction. But I like it both ways. It is really, really wonderful. Thank you for bringing this one to us, showing us all of this really, really interesting information. Well, thank you, John, for coming here and letting us host you and be a part of it. I want to thank everyone out there for coming along with us as we experiment with this. This is an amazing site. If you're ever in this Northern Virginia area, uh, George Washington's Mount Vernon, this living history site with the mansions and the buildings and the people doing things and the historic trades, there is so much to see, so much to learn. It is truly an amazing site. It is a gem. You have to come here. I want to thank you for coming along with us. Um, and experiencing in any way you can, savoring along with us the flavors and the aromas of the 18th century.